discussed a number of times as to why Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham seemed out of sync in 2019. Hall of Famer wide receiver Terrell Owens gave his take as to why he thought Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham seemed out of sync. And it may not come as a surprise that he's leaning more of the blame towards Baker Mayfield. He said, obviously, Odell is a great talent. It's very misleading to say that he had a down year. He had some great catches. There were some flashes that, of that. But again, playing with an injured hip, I can't imagine what that feels like. Um, I, trying to play through that, it's not all his fault. You break down the game tape, the guy was open and the ball was thrown high, thrown behind him, thrown low. Their season is going to ride on Odell and Landry, so hopefully they're working through those things and they're healthy. Baker is better than he was last year. That offense of that team is not going to go anywhere if Baker is not being the leader there. So, last but when you look at Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham, between those two guys, who do you think has the better chance to break out and have a phenomenal 2020? Well, how often do you see another a retired uh, f player call out the quarterback of another team? You don't see that very often. Yeah, those wide receivers tend to... Uh, stick up for each other, you know. Well, what do you um, what do you think? Well, listen, I, I I don't think it was one thing or the other. I think it was both. I think Mayfield didn't have a very good season. I think he underestimated the the challenge of coming in and playing again as a second year quarterback. Um, but that doesn't mean that Odell Beckham Jr. was where he was supposed to be on some routes. Um, so I, I don't think, I think we're choosing sides, you know, just for the bait, for the sake of conversation, if we decide, try to say which one was more responsible, but clearly less for them to be good next year, Baker Mayfield is the guy that's going to have to have a good year because right. the ball's in his hands and he's the one that's going to decide where it goes under pressure. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I believe, I, I agree with that part of, of the, uh, the assessment, but you know, the other thing about that is that, do you know anybody that's killing Odell Beckham Jr. for a horrible season? I mean, I know no. pe some people think that he, he, was, um, um, he wasn't on the field enough to have good chemistry with Mayfield early in the year, in training camp and early in the year. I know whether that was an injury or, or what, um, I think people are willing to say was not a good first year between them. And they'll probably be much better together this coming right. season. Well, the other thing is, when, when you think about it, um, it's easy. It's, it's low-hanging fruit to say Baker Mayfield just had a terrible year. But yeah. it's not, it's not low-hanging fruit if you say, well, he had a terrible year, but it's also, you know, they changed coaches on him, offensive coordinators on him. Uh, too, many, too many different new coaches. You don't see that too often. And, and I think that's a legitimate, uh, a legitimate uh, reason for – people thinking that way yeah and, and I think everybody fairly looks at this year and says he's got two outstanding running backs he's got two very good wide receivers um, now it looks like the tight end position is going to be uh, uh, improved to the point where we would say those guys are a, a better much better than average if Hooper and and Bryant and Njoku are, are still in, on the team together. When and, the and, you got a, and you got a fullback. And you got a fullback. So yeah, and we think we have. We think the Browns have a better uh, offensive uh, uh, head coach now. We don't know that for a fact because we were saying all the same stuff about Freddie last time, uh, last year at this time. 